Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Diawal Abkrish from Grasveld Herdehalf in South Africa. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Herdehalf in general and production efficacy in the intensive lambing system. A few points that I'd like to talk to you about regarding the Herdehalf is we always say prevention is better than cure. Closed herds, vaccination protocols, worm management protocols, treatment protocols, standard operating procedures, and I'm just going to touch on the quarantine protocol as some of our, my colleagues will get to that. What do, we, what do we realize or what do we talk about when we're making use of a closed herd? It's basically when no new animals are brought in and introduced into the standing herd. We're breeding our own rams, raising them, and then using them on our own new herd again. So basically no animal that leaves the system gets reintroduced after what amount of time so ever. There's actually a very small percentage of herds that can be categorized as closed herds. A vaccination protocol. When making use of a vaccination protocol, it's very important that you have a good relationship with your, with your herd health veterinarian. There are some, um, some of these vaccinations that I, I say they need to be compulsory and the vaccination program needs to be tailor-made for your farming enterprise. It is the backbone of the, the, of the intensive seed production system and it is an adaptive model. There needs to be continuous re-evaluation and changes can be made accordingly. It is when drawing up a vaccination protocol, you do not, you do not need to have a money saver attitude. We need to make sure that we provide the correct vaccinations at the correct time to the correct animals. This is the cornerstone of a successful intensive farming system. When drawing up the vaccination protocol, I'd like to divide my client's flocks into the following. Lambs, replacement use, adult use, and rams. When we go, let's jump to the adult use. I'd like to vaccinate the adult use as pregnant use six to eight weeks prior to lambing. That ensures good quality of colostrum. And with the lambs of that use, I'd like to vaccinate them not prior than eight weeks after birth. Uh, the reason for this is we don't want interference of the vaccinations with the maternal immunity that the lambs receive via the colostrum. Replacement use are building blocks of our herds. We need to take care of them and we need to ensure that we could get a good ground base for them. Our rams, we need to remember that all our vaccines must be done prior to six to eight weeks before mating. Worm management protocol. We need to start farming with worms rather than trying to farm without worms. And this we can only do if we select animals that are more resilient to worms. We need to set goals, basically trying to do as few as possible vaccinations, or drenchings, dosings per, per season. And it, I only do it to prevent production losses, and we need to combine that with pasture management. I make use of the following aids that we've got available to us. Formature, a five point check, the fecal egg count reduction test, and the fecal egg count. And then we do target selective treatment, the right product at the right time. This is just a massive infestation of wireworm. Just to give you an idea what the amount of anemia is that wireworm can cause. One female can lay about 10,000 eggs per day. This population can increase to more than 2 million of 200,000 worms within three weeks. This ensures an exponential population growth. After 60 days, the population is into the millions. If each adult worm just sucks about 0 0.05 milliliters of blood per day, 100,000 adults sucks 5 liter blood per day. That is more than the amount of blood that the lamb has got in his system. This is just a formature card and a basic example of the anemia guide that's on it. 
that shows us when to drench and when not to drench. This is just a five point check, it includes the Fomacha scorecard, as I just showed you in the previous slide, the body condition score of the ewes, the DAG scores, basically the soil backsides, the nasal discharge of nasal bots causing that, oestrus overs, and the bottle jaw, the edema that forms. The treatment protocols that I like to draw up with my clients, it, we start with ensuring the correct diagnosis. Treat animals accordingly, not just a shot in the darkness. And we are responsible for using antibiotics to the best of our ability, not just using every and any antibiotic that we've got. And make sure that we do this in the correct injection sites. Standard operating procedures. I like to start with a good clinical examination of the animal and either the prob identify the problem, it, whether it is a herd problem or an individual animal problem. Like this you in this photo, this you cervix didn't dilate when going into lamb, the you went and lied down, the, the guys didn't identify the problem, and we could have done a C-section on that you and we would have saved five animals. Production losses, it's just some of the diseases or the that we're going to go through and um, i'm just going to mention them to you now pastorella multicida or pneumonia pulpy kidney or clostridium perfringens type d a blood gut as in that photo that's also a clostridium mastitis with different causes enzootic abortion brucella ovis mainly affecting rams Joni's disease that's a silent killer and spreading through our through our, our herds at this stage and we're not taking and not doing enough to prevent it and take care, take care not to bring it into our herds. Blue tongue and rift alley fever are two of the vaccinations together with the clostridial and the pastorella that is that is very essential in my own herd and off the sore mouth infection. That is one of my own ewes that died about two weeks ago and after having a bit of mastitis. Brucella ovis causing our rams to be not as fertile as we'd like to be. The reason for we calling it the silent killer um, is your in the beginning your your pregnancy rate won't come down, but as the disease progresses, as you can see, the test is on the left. Um, it, it is becoming abnormal and that reduces the amount of the, the normal sperm that can be ejaculated into the U. Off or sore mouth, um, that's just a picture on the right of the lamb of this particular U. It's only got a small lesion on his mouth, but look at the size of that lesion on the teeth. That teeth will never, never function normal again. Subclinical production losses that we get in the intensive lambing system. Um, the one that we most commonly see is a break in the wool, mostly associated with a fever and a nutritional cause. That is one of the causes that shows me that we might have had a break in nutrition where the animals weren't properly taken care of. Internal parasites that causes anemia and some might cause damage due to migration, migrating tracts. Um, external parasites also blood sucking and might cause um, fly strike. Then early embryonic losses. Production effectivity. Um, the, we need to start farming better with the number of views that we've got. The only way we can do that is if we produce more lambs with the same number of ewes that we, that we have. Production of more lambs with that same number of ewes to ensure that we must prevent clinical and subclinical losses. We must be, ensure more effective feeding, provide the correct amount and the correct type of feeding to the correct animals during a specific, a specific stage in the in the production system we must make sure that our management is as effective that it can be 
We must make sure that every lamb counts. Um, I always tell my clients, they must go and calculate how much it, that ewe lamb that they lost, how much is that in production, how much does that calculate to within the next three years. And then something that I'm very strict on at my clients is colostrum management. If you have a look at this photo at the bottom right of the screen, that's a stud you that the workers didn't get the message correctly. And they tried to milk out that you and look at the damage they did to that teat. Just a beautiful photo of a lamb that's just, just born. Colostrum management. Colostrum is one of the the building blocks of our lambs and we need to make sure that all the food that we put in and all the vaccinations that it, that we do to our pregnant ewes gets to our lambs with the, with the colostrum 50 milliliters per kilogram within the first two hours after birth 10 percent of the body weight of the lamb within the first 20 hours after birth and of which the full the first four to six hours of birth are absolutely crucial as the, the, the small intestine is permeable to the molecules that is the antibodies that the lamb gets from, from the colostrum within the first four to six hours. After that, the, the permeability of the small intestine decreases and no matter how good the quality of colostrum is, after the first four to six hours, it doesn't, the lamb can't take up any of that that colostrum or the antibodies basically in the colostrum so colostrum management is not just the quality but the quantity as well the missing factor that we're making that we that we have in um, the intensive production system of sheep is basically due to early embryonic losses um, then we are divided into these three stages Basically, early embryonic losses, the scanning, from scanning to lambing, pregnancy checking to lambing, from lambing to weaning. Just to give you an idea, that's a, a lamb um, embryo on the right hand side, that right picture, that was about that uh, 28 days old. This ewe died after trying to jump the crawl, and um, we did a, a a full post-mortem on it just to, to show the, the, the workers and the staff how to do it. And she was pregnant about 28 days. That's just the size of the lamb. So basically when, when we speak or when we talk about early embryonic losses, the embryo only implants about 20, uh, 17 to 21 days after mating has taken place. So within the first three to six weeks, we'd like to have the use under as less stress as possible. That ensures proper um, implantation of the embryo into, the, into the, the uterine or the uterus. And then we need proper feeding as well. As the mid part of our, our pregnancy, Basically, from scanning to lambing is when the biggest part of the placenta forms, and that ensures proper feeding to the lamb while it is still in the uterus. When we do not feed the ewes properly, and we have excessive rough handling of the ewes, we might lose some lambs during that period. The biggest problem, in my um, opinion, is basically from lambing to weaning, we're putting everything into these use from preparation um, prior to going to the to the ram. Then we do the vaccinations and we do all of that. We do our scanning, we do our proper feeding. Then we have proper control at birth. And we ensure that the lambs get enough colostrum. And then we, we slightly relax after all the, these lambs are born. And then we get a, a big loss from lambing to weaning. Um, uh, early embryonic loss can be normal within 2%. From scanning to lambing, also 3 to 2%. But then we get our biggest losses from lambing to weaning. And um, with increasing our effectivity on our farms, 
we need to make sure that we decrease the number of lambs that are being lost here. This is just one of my own ewes that lamb down. You'll see that this is basically um, a quadruplet, and she reared all four of the, those lambs um, up to weaning and without any additional milk. Thank you very much for your time. I hope that I could have helped you a bit in this instance. Please feel free to contact me, and thank you very much.